In our male company, there was a tradition of going fishing, but not just setting up fishing rods on the shore. We would thoroughly prepare for a few days of fishing on boats with tents and full gear. Whether it was good or bad, we often set up nets during these fishing trips. This time, we reached our favorite docking spot and set up camp with two inflatable motorboats. We started settling in, and Sanic began disassembling the net, repairing it, and working on it all day until dusk. The beach at this location was gently sloping and sandy, with fine river sand that left clear and long-lasting footprints. Vasily noticed some bear tracks not far away after the first night. We didn't notice any new bear tracks and felt somewhat relieved, hoping that our furry friend won't return. Every morning, we would go upstream on one of the boats to a fishing spot, drifting slowly with the current while fishing with our fishing rods. We always left one person in the camp to watch over our belongings, and one of the boats stayed in the camp. This year, it was my turn to take the first shift. With little water in the basin, I lit a fire, set up a kettle, and decided to cast my fishing rod while waiting for the water to boil. Being an economical person, I didn't want to touch our supplies and planned to make fresh fish soup from the fish we caught for lunch. By lunchtime, the guys would drift down with the current, and they would be delighted to have fresh fish soup. So I'm standing on the shore, keeping an eye on my float when I hear rustling behind me. I thought that maybe the water in the kettle was already boiling, so I put my fishing rod down on the bank and approached the kettle. As I looked, I saw that only bubbles were starting to accumulate at the bottom. I returned to fishing, and the rustling grew stronger and closer. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw bushes on the left shaking, and calmly, step by step, a bear emerged from the shore just a few meters away from me. I realized that if I were to run to the boat and start the motor, the bear would catch up to me, and they wouldn't ask for my last name. I thought, whatever happens, I'll just stand here and continue. The bear sat on the bank, folded its paws, and stared at me without moving. Suddenly, I felt a bite, and my angler's instinct kicked in. I forgot that I had decided not to move, made a swing, and pulled out a decent-sized bream. The bear stood up. I unhooked the fish and looked at the bear. It leaned forward, opened its mouth, puckered its lips, clearly expecting to get hold of my catch. I threw the fish to him, and he eagerly picked it up and devoured it, settling down as if he was clearly expecting more. I gained courage and glanced less frequently at the bear. The fishing was going well, and I tossed one fish after another to the bear, remembering about preparing the fish soup. I threw one fish into the bucket and the other to the bear when it was his turn. He impatiently fidgeted and shifted from paw to paw. Apparently, he was young and not particularly imposing in size, so I got used to his presence and was almost not afraid. After he had his fill, the bear left. The water in the kettle, which I had forgotten about, not only boiled but evaporated completely. I filled it up again, threw some wood into the fire, and started cleaning the fish. The fish soup was almost ready, and the guys were already docking the boat. They were enthusiastically sharing their impressions, boasting about their catch non-stop, and asking me how I was doing and if lunch was ready. The fresh fish soup delighted everyone. I told them about my encounter, but my comrades were hesitant to believe me until I showed them the footprints Dimeshko left as he sat on the shore. Vasily grabbed his phone and started taking pictures. The next day, I volunteered to stay behind in camp again, hoping to see my new friend. The guys didn't protest. To prevent the water from evaporating and the kettle from burning again, I decided not to boil water this time. I settled with my fishing rod closer to the boat and waited for our guest. At the same time as yesterday, a furry snout emerged from the bushes. The bear spotted me, approached, and sat down, folding its paws on its belly. I threw it some fish, and after a couple of minutes, the bushes rustled again, and another bear came out onto the shore. I had to feed both of them, sometimes throwing fish simultaneously, and sometimes taking turns. They patiently waited for their turn, occasionally nodding to each other. After they had their fill, 
both guests left. I was slightly sweaty from such visitors, and I began preparing lunch. When the guys returned, I told them about the visit from two bears and offered someone else to take turns watching the camp tomorrow. Naturally, there were no volunteers. Vasily even started teasing me, hinting that maybe I was seeing double out of fear. The next day, I attached my phone to a tree, directing the camera towards the shore to capture the spot where the predators would come. I set up my fishing rod, and naturally, the guests didn't keep me waiting for long. Need I say that today three bears came to visit me? What caused such a gathering is unknown to me. In my childhood years, I had only heard that bears don't gather in groups but prefer to stay solitary. The most one could see in the forest was a mother bear with yearlings or adolescent cubs from the latest litter. But my visitors, where did they all come from, looking so similar? Maybe they were brothers, unfortunately, I'm not a zoologist and couldn't determine the age of the predators. During lunchtime, the guys returned again, and I felt incredibly proud as I showed them the video of feeding the three bears with fish. The guys patted me on the shoulder approvingly and started calling me Khmashenka, referencing the fairy tale, Masha and the three bears. For me, unlike them, things weren't so cheerful. I understood that fishing from the boat wouldn't be possible this time because no one else would risk staying alone at the camp. I don't know why I didn't feel any fear myself, I was just curious to see if the trio would return or if they'd bring along more company. It seemed like my comrades had already started placing bets for the morning. I eagerly positioned myself on the shore. Cooking lunch was out of the question, the main thing was to capture high-quality video footage and satisfy the appetites of these furry guests who didn't keep me waiting. This time, another creature emerged onto the shore, seemingly behind me. My companions had begun making bets. I was already eagerly settled on the bank. Lunch wasn't allowed to be prepared, the main thing was to capture high-quality video and satisfy the appetites of the hairy guests who didn't keep me waiting. This time, another creature came out onto the shore, seemingly behind me. My comrades had started placing bets. The guest was much larger and darker in color. Looking at the enormous bear, I realized that both the previous visitors and I were much younger, perhaps even teenagers. A chill ran down my spine, and I tossed the first fish to the guest. The bear leaned over, sniffed, and turned its head towards the bushes. It let out a low roar. My surprise was immense when three bear cubs literally tumbled out of there. They pounced on the fish and greedily ate, glancing at me without any fear. Then, as a merry gang, they dashed straight towards the bucket of fish. Remembering my grandfather's story that touching a bear cub would result in the mother tearing you apart with her claws, I stood frozen. The lively gang roamed around the camp, wreaking havoc in the tents, while their mother sat and watched me with a satisfied expression, folding her paws on her belly. Suddenly, from those same bushes, yesterday's bears and their mother appeared. I realized they were her offspring as well. It was a rare case where all three cubs survived in the litter. Apparently, they were not even two years old yet. Normally, they stay with their mother until that age. But this year, the fortunate mother had brought another trio into the world. The young bears imitated their mother and started nodding plaintively. She raised her head, never taking her eyes off me. Puckering her lips, she let out such a heartrending roar that I felt an immediate urge to dive in and catch fish for her and her cubs with my bare hands. Then I remembered the net I had set up the day before. It was highly unlikely that the multi-child mama would allow me to sit in a boat and collect these treasures. I had to wade into the water fully clothed, swim to the floats, and drag the net behind me. The catch was decent at that time. But before I could pull it all onto the shore, the mother bear and her older cub started picking fish directly from the net and immediately devouring them, tangling and ruining the entire fishing gear. The bear let out a vocal command, and the family withdrew. When the guys arrived by swimming, I was practically in shock. We quickly packed up the camp, leaving that place. Who knows, maybe tomorrow the father bear will join the family, whom I definitely won't be able to feed. The footage I captured confirmed that I wasn't making it up. 
The torn tents and spoiled food left no chance for us to continue our vacation. We had no choice but to roll up the flags and leave our belongings in the boat as we headed down the river towards home. There were no supplies left, the tents were ruined. Finding a new spot to continue our rest was not an option. Suddenly, in the back of the boat, under the rear seat where we had left the torn tents without folding them properly, something stirred. A snout and the head of one of the younger bear cubs appeared from beneath the tarp. The little one was very frightened. It whimpered and tried to jump into the boat. I had to calm it down, wrapping it in the tarp. Upon returning to the village where we had left our car, we arranged to take the cub to a veterinarian. Then we would figure out what to do with it. The examination by the specialist revealed that the bear cub had a fishing hook embedded directly in its hind paw. Apparently, the hook was clearly hindering the cub's ability to walk and could have caused inflammation and eventually the cub's death. The veterinarian successfully removed the hook from the little one's paw and recommended that we either return it to its original location or hand it over to a wildlife sanctuary. We decided to return the cub to its mother. As we approached the spot of our encounter, we noticed the entire bear family waiting for their fellow member. After reuniting the siblings, the bears moved away. Whether the little one accidentally found its way into our boat with its injured paw or if the mother brought it to us and left, we will never know for sure. Sonia was upset with me for ruining the net. I had to give him a new one as a birthday present. That's the heartwarming story. When a boy went to an animal shelter to adopt a dog, he just opened the door of the shelter and was stunned by what he saw. He saw countless puppies in the cage, some of them were seriously injured, some left their mothers just after birth, he looked at the pair of pitiful and frightened eyes, the little boy was stunned, he had never experienced that kind of pain, those eyes were stabbing his heart, the boy cried, tears filled his eyes. There are all kinds of animals living on our earth. They run on land, play in water, and shuttle in forests. However, countless dangers surround them all the time. As giant elephants in people's eyes, they also become vulnerable in the face of danger. Seeing her child seriously injured, the mother elephant's behavior moved everyone even more. On a hot July day, a three-month-old baby elephant was spotted by camp leaders in Zimbabwe's Transboundary Reserve. At that time, the calf's right hind leg was severely swollen and it was unable to stand up. The baby elephant was lying on its side on the ground, and its body was covered with various large and small wounds, some of which were already inflamed, and its life was at stake. In order to save the little elephant, the camp leader immediately provided it with simple treatment, and sent the pictures of the little elephant's injuries to the local veterinary team, at the same time, he gently sat beside the little elephant, wanting to get its trust. The veterinary team realized the seriousness of the situation after receiving photos of the calf. They immediately launched a rescue operation and obtained permission from local wildlife officials to begin searching the reserve. Meanwhile, the veterinary team tried to get in touch with locals in the area to see if they knew anything about the young calf and its worrying condition. From the photos provided by the head of the camp, the veterinary team correctly guessed that the calf's legs were entangled in the metal rings, and it was unable to get rid of the metal rings, so that its hind legs became swollen from prolonged blood circulation. After learning about the incident, Dr. Lisa Minnelli said, I suspect the elephant accidentally stepped on a metal ring set up by local villagers to capture other animals in the jungle. It is understood that when the veterinary team arrived, the mother of the calf and her herd had gathered there for two consecutive days. They surrounded the calf within a few meters in order to protect the baby elephant from other animals. However, unexpectedly, when the veterinary team drove to the location of the injured calf, both the calf and the herd disappeared. This has made the veterinarians very anxious. If the baby elephant cannot receive timely and effective treatment, it is very likely to lose its life. This is something that no one wants to face. At this tense moment, the Wildlife Conservation Association sent good news. It turned out that they successfully found the injured baby elephant by relying on the chip locator on the elephant. Time passed by every minute. In order to save the life of the baby elephant, the veterinary team did not dare to delay at all, 
and immediately set off to search for the baby elephant. But when it was about to arrive, the veterinary team had a difficult time. If they drove into the elephant herd rashly like this and made them feel threatened, even if they would not attack humans easily, they would definitely feel vigilant. Let alone treating the injured baby elephant, it is hard to say whether it can be approached. So they came up with a good idea to get the best of both worlds, to use drones to search for and track injured baby elephants in the air, and after positioning, the veterinary team will enter on foot, so that there is no need to worry that the elephant herd will be threatened by the intrusion of outsiders. It can also greatly shorten the time to find baby elephants. However, this method is far more difficult to implement than imagined. It turned out that when the drone located the baby elephant, the veterinary team went to treat it with medical equipment. However, it failed both times. Why is this? Perhaps it is because the territory of their own survival has been threatened by criminals all year round, which has caused these elephants to turn on the defensive mode as soon as they see people. The veterinarians were unable to get close to the elephant herd, which also caused the operation to be suspended again. The veterinarians became anxious again, and then they even used a helicopter, but it didn't work. In the end, they couldn't even find the baby elephant. A veterinarian involved in the rescue wrote on the social platform, we think that due to his injury, the movement of the baby elephant will be slowed down, and because he cannot do without water, the herd will not venture too far from the water point. But we obviously underestimated its operational capabilities, because we spent two days in a helicopter searching the area for four and a half hours, and we still couldn't find it. It's even more sad to realize that we no longer have available funds to continue the search and it had to be cancelled, and finally had to rely on local people to see if they could witness the injured baby elephant. Fortunately, God helped them, and just 10 days after giving up the search, a local villager once again witnessed the injured baby elephant appearing by a water hole, but the heart-wrenching scene still happened. From the photos taken by the villagers, it can be seen that the injury of the little elephant is further deteriorating. His legs are thicker than before, and the condition is very serious. After receiving funding from relevant departments, the veterinary team carried out another rescue operation. This time they must not give up. Finally, on a Saturday, the veterinary team found the injured calf. They couldn't see its swollen legs at all from the helicopter, they could only feel the seriousness of its injuries from its slow movement on three legs, and right behind the calf, its mother followed it closely, protecting it. The veterinarians were finally able to get a close-up look at the extent of the calf's injuries when two anesthesia needles were precisely placed on the calf and mother, which collapsed. The veterinary team came to the baby elephant and its mother, and first comforted the mother elephant. The mother seemed to understand that these people were here to rescue her baby, and lay quietly beside the baby elephant. Veterinarians immediately examined the calf's wound, which was far worse than they had imagined. The baby elephant became thinner, but luckily it was very strong before. Under the anesthesia, all the indicators of its body were stable. Facts also proved the previous speculation of the veterinary team. The metal ring had been deeply embedded in the calf's leg, even reaching the bone. At the scene, the veterinary team x-rayed the baby elephant, and everyone breathed a sigh of relief. Although the calf's leg suffered some injuries, fortunately its blood supply is good. Veterinarians said there was a good chance the calf would recover due to its young age. The veterinary team cleaned the calf's wounds and gave him painkillers. After all this was taken care of, they woke up the calf and its mother. When mother elephant woke up, she seemed to understand immediately that this group of people had rescued her beloved child. It nodded to the baby elephant, and then they walked away slowly under the veterinarian's eyes full of blessings. The veterinarians knew that the baby elephant might have deformed legs, but fortunately, it no longer had to endure pain, and they also believed that under the care of its mother, the baby elephant would grow up smoothly under the blue sky. Maternal love is great. Mothers take care of their children all the time and do everything they can for them. The brilliance of maternal love is not only exclusive to human beings. The maternal love of animals is also precious. 
After an elephant is injured, it has been following its side, for fear that it will be hurt in the slightest. This is maternal love. There are thousands of kinds of love in this world, only maternal love is the most selfless.